InshaAllah the month of Rabbil Awwal's immense blessings and this ashq and love for Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah grant us from the reality of Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem Ta Seen Tilka Ayatul Qur'an Wal Kitab al Mubeen and grant us this Divinely fire of ishq and love that illuminates our heart into the Divine the Presence and illuminates our spiritual vision to see through the darkness of this material world. We pray that Allah grant that light to our hearts, to our families and to our children's and communities inshaAllah. That for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah dress us and bless us and safeguard us through the difficulties of dunya that this material world is moving towards. And alhamdulillah this way of good character and humility and the way of, of exemplars, exemplars of faith and to live a life through an example and the best of examples is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad that when Allah loves the servant, He sends them in their heart to look, look to Prophet as your example. That have the khuluq and the character of love and compassion, the humility in which to allow people to approach that reality. Means the prophetic reality is an example for all those to follow. And we've described before that what makes the prophetic reality is the holy surah. Means the, the beloved face of Sayyidina Muhammad is the example for all prophecy. That anyone who wishes to take the path of Allah and wishes to imitate the guidance of the Prophets of Allah and rise to be an ambassador for the prophetic reality. Awliyaullah come into our lives and teach that the face is the secret. That in your existence your life is to open your hearing. Because this Divinely face that Allah describes all things will perish but the holy face. Means that everything… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is not in comparison to the face. Everything will perish, everything will, will vanish but the holy face. And to that reality we beg and pray that Allah to return us, return us into the presence of that holy face that we don't want paradises, we're not preoccupied with your jahannams but Ya Rabbi grant us to be in the presence of that holy face and that our journey upon this earth to be returned into that ocean of reality. And that becomes the symbol of what we're trying to achieve, the highest of all realities that Allah reminds that what made the Prophets of Allah to be Prophets is that Allah dressed and opened their guidance and opened the attributes and the seven essences of these attributes of Allah that gave a nobility to the holy face. Means that they opened for them and Allah open and inspired in their lives, take a path of Sifat al-Sami, the one whom hears. If Allah to dress you with each of these attributes, 
means they were asking Allah to dress us from Sifat al-Sami, the one whom hears, Sifat al-Basir, the one whom sees. And Sami al-Basir are linked to the reality of the ears, means the one whom wishes to see, Allah put the two attributes together on the ears. So how can you be dressed with Sifat al-Basir if the reality of as is not opening, the one whom hears? Because this reality that we have to open this attribute of Allah Ya Rabbi grant for me my hearing and grant for me from your Divinely hearing the one whom hears. Then he says, Allah reminds that, Ya Allah, Ya Rasul ulil amri minkum that for this hearing to open, do you hear me? Do you hear my command? Ya Allah, do you hear my command to Prophet wa Ya Rasul? And are you of those whom following wa ulul amri minkum? Because their command and this is the the foundation of Divinely hearing. This is the way of knighthood and the heavenly kingdom. All those whom are waiting for heavenly kingdom don't think that they're waiting to be in the barnyard of the kingdom, the kingdom come and thy will be done. Well then you should be on a path of knighthood. Because the only importance in that kingdom for you is to be a knight of that kingdom. Not that you be in the barnyard of the kingdom, if you believe that the kingdom of Allah is coming and His grace upon this earth is coming and these events of the last days are coming, then they remind to us, then be a knight and take the way of chivalry and futuwa and knighthood. And the reality of that knighthood is what Allah dress them with for guidance. That they're dressed with the attribute of hearing, the one whom hears, the all hearing of Allah That inherit from my all hearing that, do you hear me? And Allah gives a means in which to hear Allah That, I hear you through the reality of Prophet That's why we're drawn to that love, we know that Prophet represents Allah and if we want to hear Allah what He wanted from me, what He requested of me, what He expected of me, well then it was given to Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why we follow the guidance and the way and the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad the Holy Qur'an and noble hadith. Why? Because this is the hearing of Allah that, Ya Rabbi I'm trying to hear what you wanted from me. And my heart has confirmed that it's to hear Prophet ﷺ's guidance. And as a result of that yearning and moving towards wanting to be guided, wanting to enter into this heavenly kingdom, Allah put it within the heart and follow my ulul amr. Not YouTube, if you find a ulul amr on YouTube, alhamdulillah, but not just follow anything. But those whom are the people of Amr, that they follow the command of Allah And the Amr again always a reminder is in the alif and the meem and the ra because this is Atiullah, Atiya Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. The alif is Atiullah, the meem of Amr is Atiya Rasul and the ra and Rabbaniyoon and the arbab, the lordly souls, these are the ulul amri minkum. That we took a life in which to follow the ulul amr, in which they trained all their life to hear Allah Somebody walking amongst the streets and arguing on the streets and taking their zlom from the streets but they never sat to hear themselves, to know themselves, who knows themselves will know their rabb. This is not the ulul amr, the ulul amr are those whom they spent their life in tafakkur and contemplation. They spent their life for their inner voice to hear what God wanted from them. What did Prophet want from them? And then they accompanied ulul amr 
and they took a life of Samirna wa ta'ala, you say it and we're following. And as a result Allah sanctified their hearing. And only by means of their hearing and Sifat as Sami dressing them, Allah began to open Sifat al Basir. So, Sami al Basir are linked to the ears, it's not on the eyes. The Sifat is not based on your eyes. This attribute of Sifat al Basir is linked to your ear because the ear unlocks the seeing. That's the difference. New Age people they didn't listen to anyone, they're wild like gorillas. They dress wild, they act wild, they're, they smoke wild things. We've been to their associate, they give you tobacco, they give every type of crazy thing. Showing you what? They think they open their eyes but their ears have never been tamed. No that, that is from the jungle, that's from the, these jinn playing with people. This way of knighthood is not easy. This way of verification from Allah from the Divinely Presence, if they've been sanctified and certified that their hearing is true, they submitted and they continuously in their life submit, submit, submit. As a result Allah began to train in their seeing that when your ears have been sanctified then now your vision will become sanctified. And they took a life in which to look to the inner, inner reality and the zikr and the cleansing of their heart to polish their mirror. So it means that if a person is not listening they're not seeing and if they think they're seeing they're being fooled. This is a big question mark. The one who's not listening and they're not reached the sanctified hearing and Sifat as Sami because the one whom listens, listens. The one whom listens has a fear, they tremble from that reality for if Allah should look them out the punishment is severe, means they're the yaqeen, khudan al-mutaqeen. This is only for mutaqeen, means the level in which they have a sincerity is their whole life was to hear, to hear, to hear <coughs> and struggle with the adherence, the ability to fulfill what was heard and what was asked of them regardless of popularity, regardless if it's in fashion and not in fashion. Regardless of what people think, their only concern is what Allah wanted from them. And that command came through the beloved heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And that isharat and that guidance came in the, in the presence of their murshids and their guides in which everything that was taught was for me to follow and to obey, follow and to obey. As a result of the reverence for that command, the respect for that order, the adherence to that way Allah began to open real basir that I'm going to give from my sifat to dress you, my attributes, these names and attributes of the Divinely Presence which are infinite, 99 of the most beautific which are the foundations of all the names of God Almighty which are infinite, there are no beginning and no end. But out of this attribute the one whom's all seeing is going to dress the heart of the servant. Allah is going to grant His Divinely attribute, the one who's all hearing dressed upon the soul. The one who's all seeing will be dressed upon the soul. But that can't be dressed on a soul that doesn't hear, doesn't adhere and doesn't follow the command of Allah follow the command of Sayyidina Muhammad and then follow the command of Ulul Amri minkum. How could it? Means these are like a medical school now when you accompany the shaykhs they're teaching you 
decipher one your path you should be clear on your path if you're not opening hearing then don't pay attention to what you think you're seeing most likely it's illusions and delusions and if you begin to come across somebody who claims that they're seeing but they're clearly not from the people whom are hearing it's rubbish and run because now the man of deceit has entered into this earth and he's going to play with everyone's hearing and definitely going to play with everyone's seeing in which people will think that they're seeing and a reminder in this formula you can't see if you don't hear this is the way Allah has structured the reality because then you can see the effect of corruption. The one whom doesn't hear, doesn't want to hear anything, why would Allah open the ability to see within the heavens? To corrupt and to spread corruption? So means no, the safeguard is the one whom followed the system. We said before if you're on a plane and you came through security you feel a safety everyone on this flight has been checked but if the person next to you says wow I'm so late I got to jump over the fence and I had to come across and get on this plane then you should be very scared that that person didn't go through any security means the one whom's not been secured and checked how are they seeing what effect is coming upon their being to give them these delusions and illusions and that becomes the danger, that becomes the way of deceit. And that's what opens upon the earth when people are deceived by the, one, the great deceiver. We have nothing to do with anti-Christ because we're not following Christ. We follow Sayyidina Muhammad So what is called for our nation is Dajjal the deceiver. So his murids they specialize in deception and they deceive people to think they're hearing, to think that they are seeing but most they know 100% they're not hearing anything, they don't want to hear, they don't want to submit, they love their free will. Means this way is a security check. The hearing has been sanctified, they took a path of discipline. When they understood discipline they understood there's no way to bounce around. How could you bounce around? How could you go to this event, that event, watch this YouTube, watch that? You would be so confused, you understood that this one holds my key and my whole life is to hear it and hear it and fall under that discipline until that key opens within my being what needs to be opened and no other can put a key to open that. And you can't jimmy the lock, you can't put two pieces of metal and break the key open. But what can come is a delusion in which the jinan they come around and they begin to play with the people give them illusions of their visions and their sights. They go out now and they're taking drugs and they take chemicals and they make pharmaceutical chemicals and they say that it opens up the pineal gland and as a result they're seeing uh, they entered into the world of shayateen and the nefarious jinn. Again mu'min jinn will never, never open anything without the command of Allah and the command of Prophet That's why the center has two pineapples on each of the pillars because the pineal gland is a little, looks like a pineapple at the stem of your neck. That was already there before we arrived Allah sent that as a symbol that the real pineal gland to open is with Izzatullah when the servant is is submitting and Allah want to begin to open these energies within the veils of their hearing, Sifat as sami begins to dress them and the veils of their hearing to hear with their consciousness. 
they hear themselves, they hear the presence of the shaykh and then that begins to go up in their darajat of what they can hear. And as a result of that being unlocked Allah is then sending the energies in which to open their basir, sifat al-basir, the one whom sees through their heart and not through the eyes. And the train with their eyes to be cast down that they're not trying to send the image from their eyes to their brain but they cast their head down and that from their heart to bring the image. And as a result of these sifats now this prophetic face beginning to dress the servant, right? Because what makes then the prophets? What are the ranks of the prophets alayhimus salam? Is their hearing. From the first level prophet of Allah is based on what he heard and his ability to hear and what Allah has given him of his power until the highest rank and the highest of them, the master of the one whom hears is the one who speaks. Makes sense right? In a room who hears the best? You speak. If you don't hear how are you going to speak? Who are you speaking about? Who are you speaking from? So what Allah named the one whom speaks is the month opening, Yaseen the one whom I granted for all of eternity, Yaqeen as sami The one whom has Ya is Yaqeen, the highest rank of certainty and I granted him the seen and that he is the certainty of Divinely hearing. I created his holy soul to hear me, that's why I created the soul. I created the Muhammadan Rasulullah only to hear me and that's why Allah clarifies in Qur'an, don't ask him to hear you. It's not his ears to hear anyone, he was created to only hear Allah But if you need something from Prophet say, Unzur halana wa ishfalana ya Sayyidi Ya Rasul Kareem that may your Divinely eyes gaze upon me to see what I'm in need of. And that's in the surah before on the month when Allah gave to us the reward that the most blessed is the holy vision of Prophet and Allah commanded those Divinely eyes that don't pass these people of dhikr and the ones whom struggling all day long to purify themselves for the pomp of dunya, the, the, the popular emirs and kings and, and royalties of dunya, these are more dear to me that they struggle all day long trying to purify themselves. They sit upon the bench waiting for the love and the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Don't pass your eyes for them. Means this was an immense reward and gift that the holy nazar of Prophet to be upon our souls. This was Allah's promise. These are not just talks on the whims of a talking shaykh, Allah's command that your Divinely and beatific eyes don't leave these people. Not that they're perfect but they sit to struggle against themselves and those are dear to me, Allah is giving to us, those are dear to me. What I gave you of your beatific vision, put your vision upon them. And this is the gift for those whom wish to purify themselves and enter into this path of Divinely love and Divinely grace. And as a result of the vision of Sayyidina Muhammad every beatific light and reality begins to dress upon the soul. Means they spend their life trying to purify their hearings and at every moment, in every moment they're trying to follow the command. And as a result Allah inspired within them, close your eyes from this world. No matter how good it is, how much beauty it has, all, all of the benefits of this world 
still their only peace is when they close their eyes and return back into the presence of their Lord, their Rabb. And only then they find the coolness within their heart, the refuge from all danger and all confusion, all difficulties and tribulation. Their only peace is within their heart when they retreat back into their heart. And as a result because they retreated into their heart Allah made their heart to be His home. And in Allah's home everything is beautific and divine. And in Allah's home are His angels, in Allah's home are all His Prophets. Means when you enter into Allah's home there has to be an immense respect. You can't talk bad about angels, you can't talk bad about any of the Prophets of Allah Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadai wa Salihin. It's a way of immense adab and respect, they're all in the home of Allah which is the heart of that one who believes. And Allah introduce you to all who are in His home, that, these are my angels, these are the Prophets of Allah these are the holy companions, these are the Ahlul Bayt, these are all the Salihin. All of these beautific realities Allah give to the servant who ran from dunya trying to help them. There's no external person to help us, there's no refuge in the physical realm to help us. They took a path in which to continuously go back into their heart. Every time things are difficult they're in their heart, every time things are beautific and in their salah they're in their heart. And in their heart Allah beautified their home. That when you come into this home with this love and this sincerity, look at what I have opened for you in which you see My angels. You see my heavens, you see my paradises, you see my prophets and those whom I love. This is Allah's gift and reward for those whom they took their life in which to listen to Allah And they listened with immense reverence and love and respect. And the role of Ulul Am the ones who represent Sayyidina Muhammad is to be loving and soft. The people are now running to the hands of shayateen and they think they're free. They take holy items and begin to burn them and they think they're free. They ran from paradise and running into Jahannam. And they think they're free, they don't understand what they're doing. But you sit back and watch that how, how they think they could be free. When our whole existence was to run towards paradise, how could someone fool you to think that, I'm going to burn every symbol of paradise and God and the Divine and think I'm free? You just burned your own rope and entered, entered into eternal torment and eternal fire. Or you believe that there's absolutely nothing when you close your eyes and that's going to be your eternal darkness. Allah will grant you your wish, Allah will grant you what your faith was. If your faith is that there is nothing, I'm going to burn all the symbols of His grace and I'm going into nothing and the angels say, Ameen. And when you die you enter into an ocean of black, nothing, into a great abyss of nothingness which the torment of it is worse than Jahannam. At least Jahannam you can see other people screaming but the torment of eternal nothingness. And Allah will ask, this was your own desire. This was your own request. So Allah's infinite grace and rahmah to us 
don't despair in the rahmah of Allah Seek refuge in your heart for if Allah should grant the servant's sincerity and begins to beautify his heart, remodels his heart, says, since you've come into this, this is my home, I'm going to remodel it amazing. I'm going to furnish it in a way that you can't imagine, that you're, you'll be in the companionship of all those whom Allah loves. And every time you make refuge into your heart, the beautific visions of Allah's Divinely grace that never ends. That was the, the source of all grace and mercy that Allah gave. That even the torment of Karbala and Ashura in which Imam al Husayn as salam was in torment of the death and destruction that was being inflicted upon him, all he could see was the holy face of Sayyidina Muhammad smiling upon his soul and inviting him that, you're coming back to my presence. And these lights and this grace that dress the soul they can no longer see or feel dunya. And at times Allah has opened for awliyaullah a munajat and a du'a in which everything disappears and all of paradise and all of the holy souls appear in front of them. That in that moment all they can feel is that paradise reality and all of dunya vanishes. And if you slice them into pieces they wouldn't have noticed they already left onto that side. And then Allah bring them back for the dirtiness of dunya. The immensity of what Allah can open for the servants has no limit. There's nobody who can tell me no, there's nobody who can write a comment although all the dajjals will come and make comments that says no, there's no limit on Allah's infinite grace and mercy and rahmah, especially those who are muhibeen and took a path of love that they admitted to themselves their weakness. I'm a ana abdukul ajis and da'if, I'm captive and I'm a servant Ya Rabbi, I'm weak and I have nothing, I know nothing and I have nothing other than Your Divinely grace. If Your grace should dress me today, alhamdulillah. If your grace should support me today, alhamdulillah. For if you turn your grace away, then I have nothing at all. Subhan rabbika rabbil azatama yasifun wa salaamun al musaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.